Good morning. Today's Thursday, the 11th of March, and it's Thursday in the third week of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We implore your majesty, most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so may we press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The reading is from Jeremiah. These were my orders. Listen to my voice, then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Follow right to the end the way that I mark out for you, and you will prosper. But they did not listen, they did not pay attention. They followed the dictates of their own evil hearts, refused to face me, and turned their backs on me. From the day your ancestors came out of the land of Egypt until today, day after day, I have persistently sent you all my servants, the prophets. But they have not listened to me, have not paid attention, they have grown stubborn and behaved worse than their ancestors. You may say all these words to them, they will not listen to you. You may call them, they will not answer. So tell them this. Here is a nation that will not listen to the voice of the Lord the God, nor take correction. Sincerity is no more, it has vanished from their mouths. The word of the Lord. The Gospel is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. When the devil had gone out, the dumb man spoke, and the people were amazed. But some of them said, It is through Beelzebul, the prince of devils, that he casts out devils. Others asked him as a test, for a sign from heaven. But knowing what they were thinking, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is heading for ruin, and a household divided against itself collapses. So too is Satan. If he is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand, since you assert that it is through Beelzebul that I cast out devils? Now, if it is through Beelzebul that I cast out devils, through whom do your own experts cast them out? Let them be your judge then. But if it is through the finger of God that I cast out devils, then know that the kingdom of God has overtaken you. So long as a strong man... So as long as a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than he is, atta he is attacks and defeats him, the stronger man will take away all the weapons he relied on and shares out his spoil. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings today are clearly about you've got to take sides and you've got to carry through the side you have chosen. The first reading, Jeremiah, on behalf of speaking on behalf of God as a prophet, tells the people, God has done right to you, but you didn't do right by him back. You have strayed, you have not kept the covenant, and you must come back. In the Gospel, Jesus is challenged that he's challenged by somebody saying, you're casting out devils, but you're doing it in the name of the devils, being the prince of devils. And Jesus fights back and says, no, um, I'm doing it in the name of the finger of heaven. I'm doing it from the side of God, the side of right. And what about your, the people in your community who do that? And he puts the argument back against them. But he makes a key point, a kingdom divided against itself falls, a household divided against itself collapses. And we're all so caught up in this question of both loyalty, obedience, keeping the, concert, the institutions going and being able to criticise them. As I talk today, or all week there's been discussion about is, the, is the, the palace, the royal family, divided against itself, that uh, uh, Meghan and Harry outside it have criticised it, 
and it's replying and the three palaces are trying to work together. Lots of discussion about this question of internal unity. But it applies to families, it applies to parishes, it applies to churches. And certainly if you look at John's Gospel, where he so often, Jesus so often talks about the importance of unity in the community, um, our division among the Christian churches is one of the greatest scandals. I actually think we're doing a better job than we did 50 years ago by this great emphasis on not getting into theological disputes over particular issues but saying as followers of Christ whose commandment was to love God and love our neighbour working together especially on those matters where we can lo love our neighbour together has been important and in the, locally, whether in Golders Green or nationally, Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of Westminster working together is always a sign of joy to see that the churches, where possible, are working together. And I think today we take away with us the challenge as part of our Lent journey. Are we appropriately both supporting, should we say, the institutions, our family, our parish, our country, our church, but equally are we being true to saying where the shortcomings are, recognising that we, we are so often dominated by self-interest and that we need to overcome self-interest with communal interest in order to be a true follower of Jesus. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, May your word light up our way. We give praise to Christ our Lord, the radiant light of the world. He guides our steps in a path of light, and we no longer live in darkness. Let us turn to him in confident prayer. May your word light up our way. Christ our Saviour, may we grow today in your likeness. May we gain through the second Adam what was lost by the first. May your light light up the way. May your word take flesh in our lives and your truth shine forth in our actions. May your love burn brightly within us. May your word light up our way. Teach us to work for the good of all, whether the time is right or not. Make your church a welcome light for the whole human family. May your word light up our way. May we always treasure your friendship and come to know its depth. May we atone for the sins against your wisdom and love. May your word light up our way. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We approach your throne of grace, Lord, humbly asking that as the Easter festival draws nearer, we may prepare for ever greater devotion to celebrate the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. God bless.